Now let's look at our tax policy. As recently as 1980, the top bracket for very wealthy in this country was 70%. And for two decades prior to that, the wealthiest Americans had income tax rates between 70 and 90 some percent. Today it's 35%. These declining rates on the wealthiest Americans mean that more tax revenue is coming from middle income earners. And this is during a period when the gap between those at the top and those in the middle has grown substantially. On top of that, we've allowed the estate tax to expire completely in 2010. This is a tax that affects less than one half of 1% of all Americans. Now, my colleagues across the aisle will argue that the estate tax punishes our most productive members of our society, the children of the extremely wealthy. And this gift to our most fortunate sons and daughters costs the rest of us $14 billion this year alone. That tab for that $14 billion in lost revenues from America's multimillionaires and billionaires will be passed to all of our kids. And not just the $14 billion, but the interest on it as well. I think Teddy Roosevelt put it the best. He said, the man of great wealth owes a particular obligation to the state because he derives special advantages from the mere existence of government. Those who want to eliminate the estate tax understandably don't put the children of the incredibly wealthy in their campaign literature. Instead, they talk about family farms as if family farms have been lost to the estate tax. Yet, according to the New York Times, the American Farm Bureau Federation was unable to name one family farm lost because of the estate tax. And opponents of the tax insinuate that it's impossible to design a policy that continues, continues to protect the family farms that might be even slightly effective. Yet it is, of course, quite possible to do that. I've co-sponsored a reasonable approach to estate tax reform offered by Senator Sanders, Harkin, and White House. It retains the 2009 exemption limits, $3.5 million per person and $7 million per couple, with a progressive tiered structure so that the ultra-wealthy pay more. And yes, it makes provisions for family farms. This proposal will, e ease, will help ease the burden of middle-class families who are now expected to close the budget gap. Working families are also on the hook for the corporate welfare that's compounding the national debt. Our tax system is riddled with loopholes, so corporations can escape liabilities by shifting operations overseas. In fact, corporations are often actually rewarded for sending jobs overseas by our tax system. That has to stop. And there's something even more offensive. If BP is taken to court because of their negligence in this oil spill and a judge finds that they owe punitive damages, those punitive damages can be deducted as a business expense. Why do we allow these oil giants who've earned hundreds of billions of dollars in profits in the past decade to deduct punitive damages from the taxes that they should pay? And that's if they pay taxes at all. ExxonMobil didn't pay any taxes last year. Despite its $45 billion profit, it paid no income tax. I don't bring this up to inspire anger to corporations. I bring it up because these loopholes and allowances create revenue shortfalls. Revenue shortfalls equal deficits unless they are shifted onto the backs of middle class families paying taxes.